Okay, everyone can hear me? Okay. So my name is Allison Stabos, and my capstone is on education and college students' knowledge of safe and dangerous ear care. So some background information that I thought I would include that's important for my study. So we know that in today's day and age, technology is increasing and on the rise. So <clears throat> excuse me, college students are obviously a big part of that, and they are listening to cell phones and music. And with this, that in, is an increase in headphone use, specifically earbuds. Um, so we know that there's strong evidence showing that with ITE hearing aids, there is a larger amount of cerumen production. So that is just because, again, the, the ITE hearing aid is stimulating those glands in the ear. And causing more production that way, but also it's causing a blockage in that natural pathway for the cerumen to come out naturally. So we are just kind of suspecting the same type of thing is going on with earbuds, specifically the ones that I have pictured that are in the ear canal and blocking um, any cerumen from coming out naturally. Again, the cerumen can come out of the um, ear canal naturally by any jaw movement, such as talking or chewing, and so what this is all important is because um, <clears throat> students, because they're listening to music and this is blocking, they might ha feel the need to clean their ears more often because of the cerumen buildup in their ears. So um, that might cause them to want to clear the, clean their ears more often and ear cleaning isn't always the best choice for healthy ears. So there's safe ear care and dangerous ear care that I'm going to cover. So there is a let it be attitude, which means leave your ears alone, leave the cerumen alone, unless it's causing a problem, which would be like hearing loss, tinnitus, um, dizziness. And so also with ear, safe ear care, we want to always use otoscopy before and after just to make sure the ear is healthy and free from infection. And then the three major safe ear care methods that we use in clinic are, of course, curatage, irrigation, and suction. And there's also um, at-home at safe ear care, which can be um, using olive oil, any type of oil in the ear, and then letting that loosen up the cerumen, and then using like any type of water to just flush out the ear. <clears throat> so there is dangerous ear care. So one, there, we do use irrigation, and there is a risk when using that just because water can get built up behind that wax that's left in there and cause an infection and also the ear might not properly drain out from and be very moist inside and then again cause infection, otitis externa. And then one of the studies I looked at was using foreign objects to clean the ear and this was in um, a part of Africa so the culture was a little bit different but they, used, they reported using cotton swabs, hairpins, feathers, keys, and what the study found is there was, um, showed signs of ear drainage, infection, and injury to the ear canal. And then as you can see, my lovely picture up there, the cotton swab, which is not appropriate method of ear care as we know, and it can lead to wax impaction and also a perforated eardrum, so we do not want to be using that. And then uh, ear care and education, there was two studies I looked at. One being um, ear programs for children, which this was took place in the a school district, and they had five ear-related um, programs. One being audiometry, otoscopy, a breathe blow cough method, which is kind of like blowing your nose, um, tissue spearing, and ear toilet, which is ear care, which we're mostly looking at here. So the study found that the ear toilet and the breathe blow cough were most effective for the children to use. Um, in the school district, which was interesting. And then levels of education in ear care. Um, there was another study, I think, I believe this took place in Africa as well, and they, the more uneducated people used sticks to clean their ears, while educated, more educated people used cotton. And this was significant, it showed a significant difference between education and the method they used for ear care. And most participants of the study did state that they were um, cleaning their ears to remove wax again. So that's relevant to my study. And then college students in education. So another study looked at um, education and medical students. 
and their ability to insert, ca insert catheters. So there was a pre and a post test, and then it showed that 97% of the students improved after that post test, so they learned a lot of information. And there was another study that looked at education, and it was speech pathology students and their under ability to understand voice concepts. So they split into two, they listened to um, an online lecture, they did a pretest and then listened to an online lecture, and then they split into groups that either studied, played games, or both. And it showed that playing games may be helpful in combination with studying to learn new concepts. <clears throat> so how this all relates to my study, I'm just going to kind of review. So we're seeing the possible cerumen overproduction with the headphone use, and then that may cause students to want to clean their ears more often. But we really don't know how much college students know about safe and dangerous ear care. So that is what my study will be looking at to see how much they really know and how much they can learn from a lecture. So when I was doing my research, I came across what is the best way to measure education. And that is through multiple choice questions. So that is what I used. Um, I have developed my own questionnaire. And this is the best um, option to use because it can measure reliability and validity. And I um, used certain guidelines when writing my questionnaire. And um, I made sure that the choices were clear and concise. And they did not use all of the above or none of the above. And they were in an, a logical order and they were free from clues to which is correct. So again, I just kind of used those guidelines when writing my own questionnaire. <clears throat> so it brings me to my research question, which is, does education affect college students' knowledge of safe and dangerous ear care? And so my methods, uh, I went into one classroom. It was a communication and sciences and disorders classroom. And I emailed the professor beforehand to gain permission to go into her classroom to conduct my research. And I had 45 participants, two were eliminated, one because um, they forgot to answer one of the questions and then another student forgot to fill out the back of the questionnaire, so that was nice. So I had to exclude those two from the study. And it took place in a typical college classroom, really, really similar to the one that is shown on the slide there. Okay, so for my procedure, I had them sign a consent form. They took the pretest, which was 20 questions, multiple choice, again, um, it was A through D um, choices. It was similar in length and only had one correct answer. And then I gave the PowerPoint lecture, which was on anatomy, the problem, cerumen, safe and dangerous ear care. And then they took the post test, which was a duplicate of the pretest, and that was just showing how much they learned. <clears throat> also, during this process, for while I was doing the lecture, I did tell the students, please do not take any notes because this will interfere with the data. They listened, so that was good. And so here is what I used for my data analysis. I ran a two-tailed t-test, first in Excel because I wanted to see the mean, the mean values, and then again in um, SPSS to get the p-value. And uh, what I was looking for is the number of correct responses from the pre and the post-test for each student. And my data was 100% um, all of my data, so 100% of the data, was double checked by another student, and it was 100% reliable. <clears throat> so as you can see, here is a graph of my results. So um, the shorter one on the left is the pretest, and it shows um, 9.79 um, for the mean, and then the post test is 16.95. Um, so that is a very big difference, which is good. So if you think about the pretest and post-test, it had 20 questions. So these are best out of 20. So for the pretest, their score was um, a 49% average, and the post-test was an 85% average. So they jumped to a B, which was really exciting to see. And then, so, so my research question again, and then education does have an effect on college students' knowledge of safe and dangerous ear care. And we know this because this is the SPSF, SPSS chart. And this is the p-value that is shown, which is 0 .000, which is very significant, which is exciting. <clears throat> and so this is just some discussion points I wanted to touch on. So again, education does affect college students' knowledge. And so what do we know? We know that college students really don't know a lot about ear care. 
And there's no known research on this topic so far. And then two questions that really stood out to me after I glanced over the pre and post test and saw like a big difference was question number four, which was when removing earwax, it depends on the blank of the wax, and the answer was D type. For the pretest, only five people got it correct, as in the post test, only three people got it incorrect. So that was a big jump. And then question 12, which ear care method should be used if trying to remove soft earwax? The answer is C, suction. And for the pretest, only seven people got it correct. For the post test, only five people got it incorrect. And some limitations of my study. Even though I had 45 people, it's still just one classroom, so it was a smaller sample size. And they were all female, so it'd be nice to get some, some male participants. And again, I only performed it in the one classroom. <clears throat> and for some future research, um, analyze a more general population, so some adults, maybe even teens, and see how they feel about ear care. And then do some, since education did have an effect, maybe do some educational trainings on safe and dangerous ear care and see how people feel about it and really get that knowledge out there. And then check the knowledge at a later date. I didn't ever go back into the classroom and see how much they remembered, so that would be interesting to see how much they remembered at a later time. And implications for um, my study, um, it's really awesome because people will be more knowledgeable about safe and dangerous ear care and then can spread that knowledge to others. And then there will be less ear injury and infection because people will be taking care of their ears in the correct way. And people may choose to wear different types of earbuds, so like I said on the first slide, the in the ear are really what's going to cause that wax buildup, so maybe choosing on the ear or over the ear options to alleviate some of that excess rumen. Here are my references, and I just want to thank Dr. Beef for helping me with my capstone, and Dr. King, thank you so much as being like a second advisor, I really appreciate it. And Dr. Delgas and Dr. Kroll, thank you so much for giving me feedback on my presentation and being available. And thank you to Ms. Witt, who allowed me to come into her class and conduct my research and her class for participating in my study. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, hi, Kaya. Hi, yeah. <laughs> Um, to be honest, I didn't, I didn't include how, it called um, them illiterate versus literate, so I just decided to say non-educated versus educated. It was a very interesting study, yeah. Anything else? Phoebe? Um, so for the class that you went into for Ms. Witt, yeah. were a lot of, the, were they freshmen or sophomores, or do you think that they already had, had sort of a basic understanding, or was this uh, material? I've, I think they were juniors, I would guess. I think they're like, I don't think they had had any ear care. There was a lot of kids that actually came up to me after and were super appreciative. And they were like, yeah, like even some of them had been to an audiologist to get their ears cleaned. And they're like, yeah, this is so cool. So I thought that that was <coughs> interesting. But definitely a need for education on this. Anyone else? Okay, thank you.